The one thing Newcastle United has got is the best fans in the country over anybody else, not just Tottenham. Well, I what mean, you if you are, you are owned by a state, so I would expect you to be. I think Spurs have got a better future um, based on the squads they've got at the moment. I'll be up to bet now that we finish with Tottenham. Actually. All right, we'll make the bet. Fifty pound. Done. Hello everybody and welcome to William Hill's Fan Gold Face-Off with me, Mark Goldbridge, and I've got fans from some of the biggest clubs in the world together to debate football's biggest topics. OK, up this week to my right, I've got Matty Renton from Newcastle, and on my left, it's Abby Summers representing Tottenham. So, we want passion, we want fire, but we also want a good, clean debate on five topics where I will decide who the winner is. OK, in round one, we've got supporters and who has got the best fans from the terraces, your best away fans, the plastic corporate fans, <laughs> what they're like on social media. It's all there up for grabs. Uh, Matty, we'll start with you. Well, this is easy for me. I mean, we've got the one thing Newcastle United has got is the best fans in the country by a country mail. We're the ones that do all the mails, to be fair, aren't we? Do you know I mean, we're pretty much in Scotland, so we're having to go all these away games. We're always there. Listen, we love, we love being the way it is. You know, I was in Milan. There was 20,000 fans in Milan. Only 2,000 getting the San Siro. Same for the Carabao Cup final against Ula. 100,000 Geordies went down to Trafalgar Square for the takeover. That was the best part of the weekend. So, do you mean the best thing we do is travel and support the team? And I'm having wear the best fans over anybody else, not just Tottenham. How can I argue with that? Just have a go. <laughs> you get, they, That's what we're here for. They literally they get, they, they get their tops off in the snow. Like, <laughs> They're happy to go. They that. are happy to go. L L no London fan is doing that. It's just, just not just not happening. Look, Spurs have a great fan base. We've been through a lot of pain, as Newcastle fans have as well. And I think it is testament that we still turn up week in, week out, home and away, abroad, to support the club. But I think that Matty is right in terms of a fan base for, for Newcastle. Like... I've not seen a fan base like it, and I was lucky enough to be up there for the PSG game, and that is the best atmosphere I've ever witnessed. Obviously, it was an unbelievable game. Um, and from a Spurs perspective, I've been in amazing atmospheres with us, you know, getting to a Champions League final, or that whole road to it, you know, week in, week out, White Hart Lane, my whole childhood growing up there, unbelievable, you know, it was a fortress for us, it became mm. that before we moved. And we do have an unbelievable fan base, but I, I think that I'd be lying if I said that I don't think Newcastle fans are the best in the league, because I do. Right. I'll tell you what, I'm going to give it to Newcastle. I think even Abby agrees on this. I do. And the big reason is they do genuinely enjoy the ride, regardless. They do. They, they'll go anywhere, even if they get beat. They're just enjoying it. And they have done that for years. They've packed that stadium out for years. So round one does go to Newcastle. Not the marks. I'm not going to fight you on that. OK, we're going into round two. It's 1-0 to Newcastle, but will it stay that way? We're now talking about who the biggest club is. Now, this can be based around history, legacy, finances, culture, trophies. The floor is yours, and we'll start with you and Spurs, Abby. Well, I think if you're having a look at who is a more successful club, it is Tottenham. Like, that is... Is it? That is factual. The last cup you won was, what, Inter Toto? Well, yeah, which is the equivalent of the Europa League. Yeah. Is that what they call the Fairs Cup or something? Yeah. Bears, it's right. not really it's classed, a as, a, it's it's not the classed as a major yeah, honour. It, was. it wasn't, it wasn't just the, the kids that were black and white, it was the TV as well. <laughs> Last time we won a decent trophy. <laughs> And, and I know it's rich coming from a Spurs fan, right? Who hasn't won anything in 16 years, but like, we're going back even longer for you. What has it been? Yeah, 69. <laughs> Yep, long time. Long time. Like, well, call, call a championship. Eh? We'll have that, 2017. Okay. So we're Thank talking you. about when you got relegated. Yeah, You've been things. relegated twice. Dark. Yeah. Look, I think that Newcastle are a sleeping giant. Great, great club. And obviously the takeover now is going to put you and propel you over time into a different bracket. Like, you're going to be up there fighting. You're going to base it off the city model, but obviously FFP comes into play here as well. So mm. I think that you have everything to be that bigger club, maybe moving forward with that investment. It will maybe inevitably happen. But I think if you're looking at history, trophies won as a club, worldwide following as well, and Spurs are consistently in and around the top four in the Champions League pretty much year in, year out, or mm. some type of European football, I think that Tottenham kind of win that debate. I would put it down to Tottenham remind me more so under Pochettino that you were the version of Newcastle in the 90s, mm. the Nelly men, you know, the bottlers. We bottled the 12-point lead in the Premier okay. League to Manchester United. You know, we lost back-to-back -back FA Cup Keegan. finals. Keegan. You lost Champions League finals, you know. I... But we got to a Champions League final, which, to be honest, it's not really something that Tottenham should have had any right to be in mm. with the type of expenditure. We'd gone literally a season without buying anyone. 
we played away from home for nearly two years as well. So we were overachieving with minimal funds. Mm. And I think that is all credit to Pochettino at that time. We had no right to be there, but we got there. Obviously, we lost. But it was what it was. You know, I think that Tottenham are the bigger club. I think if you looked at a worldwide following as well, Tottenham have more fans worldwide than Newcastle. Yeah, Newcastle obviously working hard to try and grow that following since we've been, you know, pretty relevant for a long time in terms of across the country and across the world. But we'll work on that. Hopefully FFP kind of winged us a little bit because that's going to stop us big time breaking in that big six every year. But I think we did it already after, what, one year of the takeover. This year, we're probably just going to fall short. But next year, we'll Just go again. Sure. I think we'll finish above sure. you next year. I'll be happy to bet now that we finish above Tottenham next All year. All right, we'll make the bet. Yeah. £50. Pound. Done. Lovely stuff. We like to see a <laughs> see bit you of, then. We like to see that. See you next year. Um, round two, <laughs> I will give it to Tottenham. I'm glad that some... I was almost counting how long it would take for someone to say Newcastle are a sleeping giant. They are a sleeping giant. There's no doubt about that. But at the moment, Spurs are the bigger club. I think it's 1-1. One, one. OK, it's round three and probably one of the more exciting rounds we've got because we're talking about who will be the bigger club in 2030. Mm. Again, finances, academies, players. You've got to get your crystal ball out. You've got to tell me who will be the bigger club in 2030. Um, I think FFP mm. and mm. rich owners could have a part to play in this. So we'll start with Matty. FFP is going to literally stop us from doing what Manchester City and, and Chelsea have done, unfortunately, but hopefully... You know, there's loopholes, there's sponsorship deals. We may have to sell one or two big players along the way. But if we're talking 10 years' time, I'm seeing it now. The two and treble. It's yeah? not even 10 you years. See it. It's six. You will see it. Six it's years' time. Six years. Doesn't even matter. That'll do. The treble in Give six us four. years. Do you know what I mean? Paul, that's... He's trying to extend it a bit. We're talking bit five. Cool. Yeah. He's trying to extend it. Bring it back down to five. Five, five years. years. Five years? Tot we'll be way we're out of sight We're in 2024. We'll be way out of sight of Tottenham in five really? years' time. Way out of sight. Well, I mean, if you are, you are owned by a state, so I would expect you to be. Well, be and something be you fair. just said as well, the fact that you're going to have to sell players along the way to balance your books. Mm -hmm. I think you did. Yeah, but we are consistently getting in and around the top. We don't really fall off that bad. Our worst season in, like, the last eight, nine years has been eighth. Mm. So, for you, you had one great season last year. Obviously, there was other factors. Spurs weren't particularly good. Chelsea, Liverpool, it kind of left the door open for you to kind of go and exploit that, and you did, and you played great football. You also kind of rode that wave that like Leicester had when they went and won the league. Everything was going in your favour. But then we look at this year, you've had a lot of injuries, and I'll give you that. But I just think that it's maybe going to take a little bit longer than you think to be the bigger club. I think it will take a good three, four, five years to really get where we are. We've got un That's taken money. us to 2030, isn't it? You know, we've got that cash pot there sitting there. We just but need FFP. to be, we'll get infrastructure sorted, we'll get the sponsors, we've got Adidas coming this year, we've got big brands coming in, big deals, that'll help. We'll take over you by absolutely miles, on, I swear down. You'll be no, nowhere near I us. disagree, look at what the stadium, look that? at the revenue. Also, I think we're also looking for new investors as well to put more money into the club, which hopefully means we're going to be more competitive in terms of who we can buy and who we're going to be able to spend big on, because that's something that Tottenham don't necessarily do. They don't go and break the bank massively. Um, on, on the type of calibre of player that we would need to improve that squad. Um, but I still think that Tottenham are a bigger club. Just, you know, support base, I think, project-wise. Nah. Do you see Eddie Howe being nah. there in five years? Yeah. Oh, you do? I do, yeah. Okay. And well, I think, I think, Newcastle's, I think okay. Newcastle's a more I exciting project than Tottenham then. all not day long. Then. I think in, if you try it's to get a player now, project. you'd rather come to Newcastle than Tottenham. Really? All Even though long. when you're finishing probably ninth or tenth this year? Well, You'd rather do that than maybe finish could in really the top finish four five. Sixth, which would probably be one place behind you. And you might, you might not. You'll bottle fourth, you you'll finish fifth. We'll finish United? above my United. Are you going to have that? I'll have my say now. <laughs> Go on. Oh, OK, OK. So, look, I think when I look at the teams, I think Spurs have got a better future um, based on the squads they've got at the moment. But I have to address the money side of it. And I do think financial fair play at the moment has got teeth. And I think that could restrict Newcastle a little bit longer. So if we're talking 2030, knowing that Spurs will be in the Champions League next year and Newcastle won't, I'm going to go just by a hair's breadth with Spurs. But if it was 10 years, I agree with Matty, I think it would be Newcastle. But we'll go on. So we'll go Spurs 2-1. No, I'm not. He's not happy. No, I'm not. Let's go to round four. <laughs> we'll get there. OK, it's round four and we're going to ask our contestants to pick one player from each of their teams to go head to head. The niche with this is that it has to be your best English player. So you can use stats, the dark arts, fan favourites to convince me that your player is the winner. Uh, Abby, who is your star English player? James Madison. James Madison. 
And Matty? Anthony Gordon. Good. Okay. I haven't made my mind up. Abby, you can go first. One of the signings of the season. Definitely up there. It was. Albeit he had a better start to the season than we're currently talking about. But he did have pretty big injury. Maybe he hasn't come back the same level at the moment. But um, I think it's all about his game management, making sure he doesn't get injured for a long period of time again. But the difference that he made coming in to Tottenham was obvious. You know, it made us tick over the balls he puts in, the vision, having that perfect number 10 to lay balls off to that kind of that front three. Beautiful. He's exactly what Tottenham were missing since we got rid of Christian Eriksen. He should have come, honestly, years ago and had been playing behind Kane. Obviously, it's a shame for us that he's, he's not there anymore. But I think James Madison will be the difference for us. I want him to obviously recover and recuperate and kind of get that, that attacking prowess that he had at the start of the season. I want to see it more. I want to see him affect games more, how he did at Leicester. But I think overall as a signing, better long term, I think that he's, he is a game changer. And even when I see him come on for England, just even in a 20-minute spell, He's the difference. He makes things tick over. He can find that pass. He can unlock a door. And I think that he's going to be so important if Spurs de- are in the Champions League. And whatever they're going to be doing and building this summer into next season, he's going to be imperative to that. If this argument took place before Christmas, you may have a leg to stand on. But for me now, Anthony Gordon's had by far the, the complete season for me. He's been unbelievable. The goals, the assists, doing it already in the Champions League. James Arnold hasn't had that chance yet. Anthony Gordon's done it at the big stage. He's now doing it for England at Wembley. He'll be on the plane at the Euros. Do you think? He's is that, li- gar- he's literally is that a guarantee? Us this season, is Anthony that a guarantee? Gordon. I think so. So he's going to be on the, the plane. Last two games. It's a guarantee with Southgate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, probably not. He's too young, too good for Southgate to pick him. <laughs> but uh, I think you know Anthony Gordon has been on fire this year. He's literally Newcastle would probably be bottom half if it wasn't for Anthony Gordon. But yeah, we're still in the chance for six. So do you think Anthony Gordon might go? Nah, he's not going nowhere. Really? Loves it. Just had a just had a young child, little Geordie. So he'll be here for a while <laughs> now. Geordie. Going to raise it. Black and white. As a Geordie. Yeah, as a Geordie. In the stands, top off. So, Gordon's going to be here for a long time. He's a fan favourite. He loves the dog arts. He loves the goals. He knows where the back of the net is. He's a star. Tell you what, good one. Good picks by both of you. I said James Madison would be a flop last summer. And I said, what are Newcastle doing signing Anthony Gordon when they bought him? Good take. Both have proven me (laughs) wrong. Um, I I, I will go Anthony Gordon. Um, I like James Madison, but I think Abby sort of touched on it a little bit. He's not had the season he should have done, whereas Anthony Gordon has. I think there's mitigating circumstances. I'd be very interested to see how it works out next season, Mm. but I will go Anthony Gordon on this, which sends us into a 2-2 super decider in round five. Okay, it's time for round five, and our super fans are going to select their all time five a side team, funnily enough, in round five. I will decide from their teams a combined five a side, and the one with the most players in it will win the round. Remember, it's 2 2, so this is a big decider. Uh, I'm going to go with you first, Matty. What's your all time Newcastle five a side team? Going to go with Shea Given. In goal, Mark, I think Shea Given, you know, he speaks for himself. Premier League legend, hasn't he? Nearly a thousand appearances, smashed it. He's a, he's a no-brainer. Then I'm going to go at the back, Philip Albert. You know Philip Albert, don't you, Mark? Mm, little little yeah. yeah, great stuff. He's a quality player. Ahead of his time, really, Philip Albert, to be fair, how technically he was at the back. He could just keep things tight back there. Probably not, just trying to love everyone. And then I'll go in the middle, Bruno Gimaresh. Best midfielder I've ever seen for Newcastle United. So I'll go Bruno in there. Hatton Ben Offer. He used to play 11 a side, like he plays 5 a side. Do you know what I mean? He was incredible. Turning everyone inside out. And then up top, it has to be, obviously, the best Premier League striker ever, Alan Shearer. There you go. Big take He's that. dropped a big name at the end. Was but was take. it all bluff before? Mm, Abby, it's a big, sure big take. I've gone no defence. Gone all out. Better you manager. All out. Yeah, yeah. High line for life, <laughs> basically, yeah. Um, I've gone for Moussa Dembele in midfield. One of the best, I think, we've ever we've ever probably seen in the Premier League, yeah, but he'll never that. get the accolades that he should do. Criminally underrated. I've gone for Luka Modric, Ballon d'Or winner. Wish he'd have stayed at Tottenham for longer, um, but obviously went on to better and bigger things. Um, and of course, Gareth Bale, because no one could do it like Gareth Bale. And then up top, I've gone with best striker uh, I've ever seen in Europe. Best finisher, Harry Kane. I'm loving this. I'm loving the fact that ultimately it's going to end up with a Kane versus Shearer thing yeah. at the end. But, How did we get there? Um, OK, mm. I will go Shea given in goal. I prefer mm. him over Lloris. Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, that's a given. And um, <laughs> nice I'm also going to go uh, Dembele. I Thank liked you. him. He was always very good against Man United. I think he'd be a very good five-a-side player. Um, 
Bruno Gomez and Modric sounds really silly because Modric is the better player, but based upon Spurs against Newcastle, I'm going to go Bruno Gomez. Wild. Um, I can't, if it's Real Madrid, it's, it's Modric. As a but, player. But, as, but yeah, I, I'm going on. I'm going on their Spurs career. Mm. So it's two on Newcastle here. Abby's getting worried. She de- yeah. she needn't bother because I'm bias, now going to go Gareth Bale. Thank you. So it's two two. And oh my God, we've ended up in a Shearer <laughs> versus Kane for the whole thing. Kane Can you feel the heartbeat? See, we need a yeah. bum. Yeah. Kane, Kane is a more well-rounded player than Shearer. She can score more goals. Yeah, but Kane can do things that Shearer couldn't. Like, like what? Score goals? Hold the ball up. Per bo- uh, per, have you I seen his passing? Oh, he passes like De Bruyne. Back, back of the net. That's all I'm bothered about. The late <laughs> attempt is... to change my mind will not work because this, this wins the whole tournament. Harry Kane. No, Thank he's you. done it because yeah. he turned you down. Thank no, you. no. I, 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 Alan Shearer is the all-time Premier League goal scorer, mm-hmm. but Harry in a five-a-side tournament, Harry Kane can create. Mm-hmm. Shearer couldn't bake a cake. Thank you. He couldn't create anything. Justice. He was, mis- he was Mr. Yeah. Lethal. Unfair. I'm going Harry Kane. Thank which you. means controversy. Five rounds, three-two to Abby, and it all came down to a Shearer Kane thing. It was almost scripted, but it wasn't. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. Um, are you happy? Get in the comments. We'll all be checking them out. That's that's close. That's really really close. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well for more great content. Thanks for watching. Was it that close? Dave McKay. Who? Say who? Yeah, so we're just going to have Shira, right? Oh, yeah. We can, we can both have yeah, Gunner. Shira, Shira's son, Shira's dad. <laughs> right, it's time for Ryan Fa- I have forgotten with an accent there. <laughs> Ryan Fa- <laughs> Ooh, Mrs. Dave Fa- yeah. Um, Not Scottish, it's because of you.